friends, and welcome back to the Journey Recap. My name is Luann, and I'm so glad you're joining us on this year's Journey Through the Bible reading. Well, if you recall from last week, we left off in Matthew chapter 8, as Matthew emphasizes that Jesus is the solid rock upon which we can build our lives. He gives us several examples of Jesus' authority over all things. He has authority over sickness, illness, disease, demonic activity, as well as nature itself. And this week, we open up in Matthew chapter 9 in this account of Jesus healing a paralytic man. And Jesus says to him in Matthew 9 verse 2, Take heart, son, your sins are forgiven. And you can imagine when the man went there that day, he and his friends were hoping that he would be set free from his physical infirmity. But Jesus had something far greater than that in store for him. He wanted to set him free of his spiritual infirmity, to let him to be free of the weight of sin in his life. And the Pharisees that had gathered there that day, they were indignant by Jesus' words because they knew exactly what Jesus was proclaiming. Because only God himself has the authority to heal a person of their sin. And Jesus was, in essence, proclaiming himself to be God. He is the Messiah. And the people that were gathered there that day, we read in verse 8, when the crowd saw this, they were filled with awe and they praised God who had given such authority to man. And Matthew goes on to, to give several other examples of Jesus' authority to, to heal disease and sickness, even two blind men, a man who was mute, as well as a woman who had suffered for many years with the issue of blood. But beyond this, we see that Jesus not only has authority to heal disease or to heal a person of their spiritual sickness, but he also has the authority over life and death itself as he raises a 12-year-old girl from the dead. And tucked within this in Matthew chapter 9 is Matthew sharing with us the story of his own calling. We read in Matthew 9, Verse 9, when Jesus went on from there, he saw a man named Matthew sitting at the tax collector's booth and says to him, follow me. And isn't that the call of every disciple? Isn't that the call for all of us to follow Jesus? And you think, what does it take to follow a person? You have to really be paying attention to making sure that, that you're following close behind so that you don't get lost. And that is what Jesus says to us, that to follow him, to pay close attention, to hone in to the things that he is doing so that we would be able to do the same. And at the end of chapter 9, we read this section called, The Workers Are Few. And Jesus is sort of laying out the mission of the kingdom, Jesus has been going from town to town, healing people, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom. And he sees the crowds and the incredible need around him. And he says to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into his harvest field. Now, some translations say, pray that the Lord of the harvest will send out workers. But either way, Jesus is calling upon his disciples to, to not only to pray, but also to participate in the kingdom mission of sharing the good news of the kingdom. In chapter 10, Jesus, he sends out his disciples. After giving them authority to do the things that he has done, he sends them out to proclaim the good news of the kingdom. And that is the call for all of us, to share the good news of the kingdom of God with the people that we encounter on a daily basis. We too need to have eyes like Jesus did, to have compassion on people. And Jesus says in chapter 10, verse 8, Freely you have received, freely give. We have been blessed so that we in turn might be a blessing to others. 
Now, for some of us, that seems incredibly daunting because we think, well, I haven't been to seminary. I, I'm not the pastor. I, I don't lead a Bible study. I'm not even sure what to say. But Jesus says that we're to go with the, with the good news of the kingdom that we've been given. And if you think back to the stories that we've read so far, these men and women who had been healed, who had been impacted by Jesus' life, they too hadn't been to, to rabbi school, but they went with the message that they had, their own testimony, how God had impacted them and their life. And the incredible thing throughout chapter 10 is Jesus gives us encouragement throughout, saying, don't worry. Don't worry about your provision. I've got you. Don't worry about what to say because I'll give you the words. Don't worry if people reject what you have to say because they rejected me too. Don't worry. It's just enough for you to follow me. It's enough for you to do what I've done. And here's the promise that he gives at the end of chapter 10 and verse 32. He says, whoever acknowledges me before others, I will also acknowledge before my Father in heaven. And this is great news for us. Our job is to do as Jesus has done, to pray and to participate in the mission of the kingdom, to share the good news with the people we encounter. And the promise that we have is that when the day comes, Jesus will acknowledge us to his heavenly Father. And that is incredible news for all of us. I hope you're enjoying this week's reading. I look forward to our time together. I'd love to hear how God has been speaking to you or perhaps some of the, the insights that you have gleaned as well as perhaps some of your questions. Have a great week. I look forward to seeing you next time.